Hello and welcome to the back to school night video here at Woodson, fall of 2021. My name is Mr. Pugh and I will be walking you through this presentation. So my full name is Travis Pugh, which rhymes with through. So uh, I've been teaching 13 years now, going on my 14th. Uh, the first five were spent in DC public schools and I've been here at Woodson for the past eight years going on nine. So I've, I've been teaching programming computer science for the last few years. And uh, before that, I was teaching mathematics courses, geometry, honors geometry, algebra two. Uh, I do live in the neighborhood, so you may see me around every once in a while. Uh, and my kids do go to Mantua. So let's get into the course. Uh, this is programming and advanced programming. So uh, we're going to be working on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python. Uh, and those are the main languages that we'll be working on in this course. The main uh, ideas that we're going to be trying to teach to the students are website design. We'll learn a little bit about control structures, looping, uh, primitive data types, methods, functions, those kind of things when we get into JavaScript and Python. Uh, just basic, good, fundamental skills for writing computer programs. Our typical class consists of a short presentation, uh, whether that's either a live presentation by me or a short video presentation that I put together uh, for the students to watch. Um, I do I often will model coding in front of the students to show them good habits, to show them good structure, things in, that I want them to pick up and, and to work on, as well as to demonstrate the concepts that we're talking about. But the majority of the class is going to be spent working on projects, producing computer programs and websites that they can take with them and build a portfolio with. Um, they do have access to computers here in the classroom. Uh, if they prefer to use their laptop, that's fine. Uh, if they need any help getting the software onto their computers, just contact me and we can set that up for them. Speaking of which, uh, this is the software we're going to be using. It's a Visual Studio Code. It's produced by Microsoft. It's a very high quality IDE, which is just a fancy way of saying that uh, it's the place where they type their code and they can run their programs within this program. It opens up a web page uh, and they get to see what they've created. Um, so this is available. Uh, it's a free software. If they want to put this on their home computer or laptop, it is available online. They just need to let me know and, and I can help them get that set up. In terms of attendance, I take it in the beginning of the class. Uh, now it's been known to happen where the students come in late and after I've taken attendance and I've marked them as unavailable. Uh, if that happens, I try to correct it. But, you know, we all make mistakes. And as a programmer, our job is to correct those mistakes, figure out what went wrong and, and fix it. And so that's what I'll do. If I made a mistake, just let me know. And I'm more than happy to, to correct the attendance. Now, if they are actually absent and they're looking for some work that we did in class, uh, all that stuff is going to be available on Schoology. And we'll take a look at that here in a minute. But everything that I do in the class, I do present on Schoology, they should have access to it to be able to, to check it out and work on it from home. And here's what Schoology looks like uh, in my classroom. You see the, the arrow here is pointing to the materials section. That tab is on the left hand side. And when you click on that, you'll see a bunch of folders. The current units always at the top. Currently it's HTML, as you can see. Once we finish this, this unit, which we're almost done with now, uh, the next unit will go into that place. It will now have a calendar on it. I'll take the calendar off of HTML and put it inside of the folder um, and label the, new, the current unit always up there at top. Now, if you click on that little side arrow here uh, and you can drop down into a detailed list of what's inside the folder, you see some, there's some additional folders for each lesson. Lesson one, two, three, four, and five which you can also click on the drop down to get individual items that were presented for that lesson. Notes are labeled notes, labs are labeled labs, and exercises are labeled exercises. Uh, notes provide information, labs and exercises are assignments. So those are required to be 
completed and, and they will be graded. Uh, exercises are graded for accuracy. So if there's 12 questions, it's worth 12 points. If they miss two, they get a 10 out of 12. They do have the opportunity to retake exercises and turn those in for a higher grade. And I will always take the higher grade. Um, and these are not assessments, right? They're not testing what they know at this current moment. Uh, all of these exercises and labs and projects are all based on their ability to improve and learn over time. One of the most important skills I think is important for the students to learn in this course is to research, uh, be able to find information. Because when you're coding, there's almost always the opportunity to find information when you're trying to problem solve. The question is, can you find the information and implement it in the correct way to solve the problem? And so, you know, they, they can use outside resources to answer these questions, to produce their labs. But I do want them to understand what it is they're doing, to understand the information that they're parsing through and uh, to be able to focus at the exercises or trying to focus in on the key information I want them to realize is important and be able to find the answer to. You can see down here in the bottom here uh, is the project. Um, so projects are a, a third grading category. There are larger productions that the students are going to produce, um, which kind of encompasses all the different things we were working on throughout the lessons. In terms of how each quarter is graded, as I said, there are three kind of grading categories, labs, projects, exercises, and you can see there are different weighted categories there. You can see 70% of the grade is based on work products. What were they able to produce? Was it structured correctly? Did it include the correct elements? Were there mistakes uh, that were not corrected? Uh, and then 30% are exercises. Were you able to answer a question about the content that we wanted to know? All of these things can be redone. Uh, they have due dates and those due dates are expected to be met or there are late penalties. But if you turn it in on time, I grade it, I give it back to you and you feel like you could do a better job then I encourage you to the students to redo it, turn it back in and improve their grade. That is perfectly acceptable in my, in my view. So what's next? After programming, uh, you could jump to computer science. You could jump to AP computer science if that's a very rare occasion, but it is possible. This programming course is designed to provide students with a basic understanding of programming skills. AP computer science and computer science are taught with the Java language. So we, we don't work with Java in programming, but we build basic ideas about concepts such as looping and conditional structures, how to write a good program, what is a method. Um, and all those things should prepare them for either of these two courses. Obviously the AP computer science course is a much more rigorous course and is designed to go into computer science first and then into AP computer science. But you see there's five classes here and there's only four years of high school. So we've developed a, a few kind of doubling up sequences where the students can take two computer science courses in one year in order to kind of get the most out of their high school career. And you can see those here and all the different benefits for each of those courses. And what you notice here is advanced programming is not on either of these lists. Um, the county is kind of phasing that out. So we're gonna continue having programming. We're not gonna have advanced programming next year. So that option won't be available. They'll have to either go into computer science or AP computer science next year. Uh, so that's it for the presentation. Hopefully this was informative. And if you do have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me. You see my email listed there. Uh, I will get back with you within 24 to 48 hours. Um, if you have any questions, you can also send me messages through Schoology uh, that will be forwarded straight to my email address. Uh, and I'm happy to, to answer any questions or discuss anything that you might uh, need to discuss.